My name is Imelda Flores Vasquez and I work for Econometrica Inc. I don't think so because I don't remember liking math or I don't remember thinking in terms of math when I was young. I actually discovered math in high school and it was thanks to a very inspiring prof uh, teacher that uh, she thought that I was good at math. And so she told me, I think math is very interesting and I think you have the capacity to solve a lot of the interesting problems and difficult problems. And they can be interesting, they can be important and they can be challenging. You can, you can entertain yourself a lot. And that's how she convinced me that, oh, maybe this is something I want to do. But I was already in high school. When I was in elementary or middle school, I don't remember thinking, oh, I'm good at math or math is what I want to do or, or even, you know, I'm better at math than X or Y. Um, as soon as I found out that that was an option, because I grew up in a small isolated town in Mexico and I knew that there was the option of becoming a teacher. There were teachers around me. I knew there was the option of becoming a secretary. That's what my mom was. Uh, and I knew that there was university and most people I, I heard about uh, in university were studying law or medicine. And so I never thought that math, studying math was an option. So as soon as I started getting into math and I went to the math Olympics in Mexico and I heard that, oh, you could do this, you could study this, you, you could major in this in college. I thought, oh, that's what I want to do. Especially because I thought that you could solve important, like I said, important challenging problems with math. I thought, who wouldn't want to be doing that? Um, I, I study events um, to see what the impact of the event was, especially in the context of healthcare. So in the US, um, many people know that we spend a lot in, in healthcare and um, our outcomes are not as good as compared to, for example, Europe. And so there are many initiatives, many programs, many ideas that people put in place to, to, to deliver better healthcare. And what I do is I look at when they start their initiatives um, and then they get them going, I look at what they, um, I, I look at the outcomes to try to determine if the initiative or if something else change things if it worked basically. So I evaluate programs to see if they work. And then for that, I use a part of statistics that's called um, causal inference. I am actually not sure if, um, if statisticians considered it part of statistics, because I think a lot of the development of this part of statistics was done by economists. I mean, uh, I have a PhD in economics. And so that's where I learned these, these uh, methods and, and, and theories. A part of it is also not only studying events in the past, but also designing experiments. Um, as you know, you know, in healthcare, if you wanna try a new medicine, you divide groups into people who you give the placebo and people who you give the actual medicine and see if it works. But sometimes when it's not, uh, when you don't have the resources or when it's not a medicine, but it's, a program to give therapy to people or to give an incentive to people to take the bus to go to um, talks about diabetes, for example, then it's not so clear that this kind of the experiment design would work. And so I also study, you know, how do you design an experiment given, you know, your budget, given the population, given what you want to study, and then try to control for all the external factors that could be influencing your outcomes. Um, you know, try to use the, the, the right statistical methods to, to control for all those factors. Those, there were many. <laughs> so listing them, one was financial difficulties. Uh, like I said, I was from an isolated small town in Mexico and it was a low income town too. And thank, Thankfully, I got a lot of um, fellowships, scholarships to finance all of my studies, but I was always surrounded by people that had the same fellowships and had parental support. And life was always easier for them. 
And I think because of that, professors were also always thinking of their cases. So if, for example, I would ask a professor, what am I gonna do in the summer? I, I don't know what to do. He would say, oh, well, you could, you know, your parents could support you a month and then you could work another month. And then I think I would think I still doing the math. I cannot, <laughs> I cannot do that. Uh, they were because they were always thinking of people who would have parental support one way or another. So that that was hard sometimes. The other is sadly I still encounter, especially in the U.S., a lot of uh, disbelief that a Mexican woman could do math. Uh, it happened both during my uh, doctorate studies when I started. I, I did a PhD in economics when I started. Uh, I think that among the professors, I had a, a reputation of being good at math, but the students wouldn't believe it. And so I actually had students coming up to me and asking if I could solve this problem right here, <laughs> like a challenge. Are you really good at math? If, if so, can you solve this problem? And I actually could. Because the kind of math that I was studying when I was in the PhD in economics wasn't as hard as the math that I studied as an undergrad. So I actually did solve some of those problems right there in front of them. And I would actually sometimes say, and if you want to do it for this other case, I can also help you. <laughs> uh, so it happened a lot. It happened also during my career. Uh, people, when you are in a professional setting, is less obvious, but I would still find people um, when there was, for example, a project and uh, they were deciding who would get to do the project, uh, a project that involved heavy math, heavy statistics, heavy programming, people would often overlook me and look at, you know, men or, you know, men that were men of color and say, oh, he can do it. And I would think, I, I am senior to this person and also I taught this person how to program. Why, what is happening here? And they, they, I don't think they were doing it on purpose, but you could tell that they just forgot somehow that I was good at math. And so I, I had to prove myself over and over. And sometimes it can get tiring. It can get, uh, it can be dispiriting. It can be disappointing. When it happens with people that you think, but you, you shouldn't doubt me. You have seen that I, I'm good at math. And so I had to you know, pick up the pieces again and again, prove people that yes, I can solve the problem. Yes, I also know how to program. Yes, I also, <laughs> etc. So it's very really challenging, but I also would like to mention that thank God, currently I am in a firm where they believe in me it's been refreshing and invigorating to have people that believe in me and that they actually are not afraid to say out loud, you're very smart, you're very clever and you're very valuable. I heard that so many times in this firm and it's really nice. So this is something that I, I hope every mathematician, every woman or uh, minority mathematician finds is a, a place where they constantly remind you you're very good, you're very valuable, you're very clever. Uh, so one of my proudest accomplishments is a paper that I published in the New England Journal of Medicine uh, about an evaluation I did uh, to a for a change in the contraception uh, program in Texas. Uh, the, the contraception program was excluding certain clinics and we did an evaluation to find out if that was affecting access to contraception. And so it was a, a paper with a lot of impact. The topic is very impactful for a lot of women, not only in Texas, but nationwide. But also um, the journal shares with me how many times the paper has been read and the paper has been read 140, more than 140,000 times. And that's more than I would expect anyone to read my papers in a lifetime. So just that one paper makes me very proud because it had a lot of uh, readership and it was about an important topic. I had several. So I earlier I mentioned my uh, math teacher in high school. She inspired me and she was always with me. 
when I was in the math Olympics and you know before I, I went to university. Uh, at the university, I had several professors that were um, really cheerleaders, mentors, supporters. Um, and they, you know, they are the ones that told me, oh, you're very good, you could do a PhD in the States. Uh, and then I still keep in contact with them and I still write them. Even when I had my kids, I would write and say, I had a baby. <laughs> They, they know about what's going on with me. I changed jobs, I had a baby, etc. because they, they, they were really supportive. And then in my career also, um, one person, there are many, but there, one person I remember, um, my boss at my first internship at the International Monetary Fund, um, he, he always told me, oh, I, I I think of you as a little sister because he was from uh, Gambia and he also came from a small isolated village. And so he understood where I came from and everything that took to get to where I was. So the, he, he's another person that I often write and say, oh, I got this job and I published this paper. So yeah, I, I have a lot of people uh, supporting me, pushing me, believing in me. I'm going to tell you something that I wish I had realized sooner. I wish I had realized sooner how smart I am, how smart people who do math are, how different and how much we can do in the world. I think that sometimes we say, and I even heard you know, people with PhDs say this, uh, I do math, but what I do doesn't really matter or it doesn't really have an impact. And I wish people would realize, you know, doing math is really hard and it can be very impactful. And it's something that not everyone can do. A lot of undergrads I see, for example, are, you know, oh, I'm very good at math, and, but what am I gonna go out to the world and do? If you know math, you can do a lot of things. The sky is the limit, really. It's, it's just a matter of believing in yourself. And, and, and then once you believe in yourself, once you realize, oh, I can do this and that and that. And if I cannot do that, I'm sure it's not that, it's not that difficult to learn. <laughs> once you realize that, you can do a lot of things. 